I'm saying and, and you're listening. Sorry, I totally talked over you there. And uh, you're listening to Nerd Talk on this fine Tuesday evening, November 22nd. This is our last show before the holiday craziness. Um, be prepared. Are we still going to be doing regular shows during that time? This is going to be kind of... We will do the best we can, as yeah. always. As soon as you said be say, prepared, like we don't I already. thought, man, I want to go watch The Lion King now. Be prepared. <laughs> should, should I tell him I got him an angry Jeffrey Irons lion? Or Jeremy Irons? What? Look, he just wants to commit lion genocide. It's okay. Oh, hey, did you remember to pause that thing? Apparently not. But you know what? We're broadcasting, so let's not worry about it. Okay. We'll just wing it. If old thinks uh, we can be heard all right, then so be it. All right, old, do we sound any more like crap than usual? <laughs> old, you can let us know. Sarcasm, totally allowed. All righty. Tonight, we'll be reviewing Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. The third it, one. Is it worth the $40 upgrade? Are 12 mo new punching bags worth beating on? On top we'll of let that, you know. we'll be re reviewing Immortals. Is it worth well, by which 7 to $10 to go see shirtless men stab each other? Find out. I forgot. I forgot we're by reviewing we... Tarson's next movie. By we, <laughs> we mean you, but you know. Just me. <laughs> Since you're the only one who shelled out for that. But it will Man, be getting why is, it, why is it that I've learned to be afraid of any film where the director only has one name? Well, you're right to be, because, spoilers, Immortal sucks really bad. Aw, that spoils the fun of later. Well, the fun will be watching me relive my pain. Mostly the pain of having wasted seven dollars in two hours. Wait, this is a two-hour movie? Honestly, from the trailers, it looked like it would barely squeeze in 80 minutes. I, I don't think it is two hours. It's it's like 90. Okay. But So yeah, we're, ab we're about to start the holiday season, and here at Nerd Talk, that means hunting through Black Friday ads. We didn't actually pull any up, so uh, you guys can look up your own. Well, we could pull up the one that I'm most familiar with, but... The one that's affiliated with your day job? Yes. Um... But seriously, I, I there's already tons of sites posting Black Friday deals, so uh, any gaming-related ones Kotaku already has up and yeah. ready to go. So there's there's actually some deals that I'm looking into. I'm specifically hunting for a cheap copy of uh, Saints Row the Third for my brother. It's new, but yeah. so I, I, I new things don't usually go on sale. It's, yeah, they're known. It's not they're necessarily to associated with Black Friday, but there's a, another humble indie bundle that just started today. So you, you yeah, can only buy that. that for you can buy that for precisely one dollar if you so choose. If you like that sort of thing. All right, so it, it's not a pay what you want thing anymore. No, it, it is a is pay a what you want thing. You are a jerk if Go you ahead. pay less than one dollar because then you're paying literally nothing by way of credit card fees. But if you pay one dollar, you got four games for one dollar. That you should be happy with that. Yeah, that's kind of a sweet deal. Mm -hmm. And you still are donating money to charity and <laughs> sending some money to the developers. Not a ton, but I mean, these things have been making a million dollars a week consistently, even though they've been shelving them out one after another after another. They're, they're not taking any break with the Humble Indie Bundle brand. They're like non -stop. Yeah, I have noticed that lately. That, that's gotten kind of crazy. Give me two seconds. There you go. Okay. Take care of that thing. Darn, I was kind of hoping we could let it run. For those of you who may be wondering what's going on in the Talk studio, uh, we're all currently trying to download the Old Republic because of the upcoming beta test for this weekend. So it's become a race between the hosts at this point as to who gets it downloaded first. And, and since you're, and I kind of tried to douche. stealthily leave mine running during the show on the same and connection we're using to broadcast. And screwing with my audio, so. And, and that's especially a jerk move on Sen's part because he has a dramatically faster internet connection than anybody else, like by an order of magnitude. So he was gonna win anyway. It is. 
It is four times faster than my home connection, so probably, probably like six s- times yeah. faster than Pyro's. Desert net. Yes, my, my, my internet is delivered by sand. It's just the sand grains <laughs> talk to the other sand grains, and then they talk to my computer. Which then talks to the mountains. Yes. And it takes it a while to get there. Yes, that's why it's so slow. Anyway, the, the right, thing then. that you're probably here for, audience members, is Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. So, Sen, yep. take that away. Okay, so this came out last Tuesday, November 17th, and is the follow-up to Marvel vs. Capcom 3, which was only released February 14th, 2011. So, So, nine months. Ten months. Ten months at this point. Yeah. Ten months and three days. Wait, you said February, right? Yes. February to November, ten months. I'm counting nine... I don't know how that's possible. Oh, yeah. March, yeah, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November. That's 11 nine. minus 2. <laughs> we can Sorry, go English here at Nerd Talk. <laughs> English teacher. So What's your excuse for everything? Yeah, Including nine months and three days ago. Yep, English <laughs> teacher. I can make up the rules. I'm in charge here. Freaking jerk ass. Command of the language, literally. It's pretty powerful. Right? That's all subjective. This is all subjective. None of this is real. So yeah. That not, is your face. Nine you're months and three days back. ago, the original game was released for $60, and now we have the follow-up, which is retailing for $40, and only available in hard copy form. You, This isn't a DLC update like the previous uh, uh, Super Street Fighter 4 Arcade Edition update, which could have been downloaded. This is a full retail copy so yeah, is it worth it? Um, well, starting off, the biggest addition we have to the game is 12 characters added to the roster, which were spoiled, in fact, like three days after the game was announced. So we've known who these people are, but we haven't been able to play them. Uh, there are multiple uh, changes done to existing characters, as well as art changes, style changes, play system changes, and just graphical upgrades that have been added to the game, as well as a full suite of balancings. So I, I guess, uh, well, let's handle it the normal way. Graphically, this is very much multi- Marvel vs. Capcom 3. They have upgraded the frame rate, though, which is really nice. This is super smooth. As far as fighting games go, it is gorgeous. What platform Even above you the play pres- I'm playing it on the PlayStation 3. And what is it available for? PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. Cool. There is no PC version planned for this game. Uh, That said, I have noticed some frame rate issues during uh, online matches, but that's mostly due to connections, whether it's mine or my opponents, that cause a little bit of chugging. But playing offline or uh, local multiplayer, absolutely smooth. No problems whatsoever to report graphically with the game. No weird graphic glitches. Um, it's a vast improvement, and I'm happy about it. Frame rate is important most of times, but in fighting games, it is nearly paramount. Especially yeah. in high-level play, when you're frame-trapping. Canceling. Where, you're, where your frame actually does decide how you are playing. Um, well then, I guess we can go on to sound, and yeah! All the previous voices are in the game. Uh, music, including and, your beloved Deadpool. Yep, Deadpool is still the same. And actually, every character has had uh, additional voices added to them. Uh, each character now has a call-in voice that's pretty good. Uh, nothing's more amusing than having X twenty three jump in after a teammate's been killed, and having her leap in just shouting this very gleeful revenge. Um, all the inga- <laughs> She's gone, like, surprisingly evil since the last game. Apparently we're changing for to, like, X-Factor, X-23, from her previous I'm confused and have no idea what I'm doing version. So, like, you guys are gonna house me and feed me to kill people? Okay. Frankly, I'd take that deal. Yeah, right? Who wouldn't? Um, people with principles? So, the entire people game's... A- in poverty... The entire game's aesthetic has been changed to look more like a comic book, and I actually think that's a really big 
upgrade to the yeah, game system And there's actually, from the character select menu, it's like two pages of a book. You've got the Capcom side all in blue and the Marvel side all in red. Yep. And the aesthetic of, like, pages flipping uh, carries you between fights. When you finally get to the Galactus fight, uh, he tears the comic book page in half and you see it fall away. Um, there's also, as, as you go to pick characters, it's like the, the, the aesthetic of it is like a frame, basically. Mm -hmm. You get a little frame of your character, and it's got some animations for them. It all looks very good. Uh, all of the moves are back from the original game, as well as new moves for certain characters. They haven't removed any character's moves, but they have tweaked how some of them work to better balance the game. Um, I guess we can talk aesthetically at and playstyle-wise, about all of the new characters. So who do you want to start with? Uh, Capcom or Marvel side? Pyro, I'm going to leave it up to you to Phoenix, pick. MF, and Wright. Okay, so we're starting Capcom. Um, Phoenix Wright is one of the new gimmick Here, characters. I thought we'd get to move neatly down the line. Nope, no such luck. Um, Phoenix is one of the new gimmick characters, and I think that's actually one of the strong things to say about Ultimate. There are very few characters that got added that are just another character. But yeah, when, Almost. once you're done with Phoenix Wright, I'm going to make you switch to Rocket Raccoon. Because these are the things okay. I care about. Well, you can assign what order I'm doing these in. We'll just X them off the list as we go. So Sh Should I get a list that we can X things off of? Sure. Phoenix's gimmick is that, like the game that he is from, he needs to perform investigations in order to acquire evidence to prosecute the opponent. And this sounds extremely weird in a fighting game, and it is. It, it makes him one of the stranger characters in the game. He's what you could call a slow build character, in that in his basic form, Phoenix Wright is terrible. He's slow, his moves have almost no range, uh, they do little damage. He is not a good character starting out. The scary part comes from when he uses the special button and one of the three main attack buttons, either light, medium, or heavy, to search for evidence around the map. He can do this anywhere. It takes him like half a second and he will pick up something from the map. So the examples are a cell phone, a knife, a vase, Full or of a file of folders, or a uh, flower pot. Uh, some of the items are not considered good evidence. They'll be grayed out when he picks them up. And so those aren't the items you are looking for, and you can use them to throw at your opponent to stun them temporarily while you look for something else. But once he's collected three pieces of good evidence, you can tap down twice in the special button to transfer Phoenix into his second of three forms, which is called courtroom mode. In courtroom mode, any of the items that he picked up that were considered good evidence are now attack items that he uses in the same way that he found them, just by hitting the special button and whatever button found the item, and will emit some kind of projectile. Uh, depending on which item it is, it will change the properties of the item. So, for instance, the knife shoots a blue energy projectile quickly straight forward. The folder projects three uh, little projectiles that then track and home in on the enemy. The vase is an arcing projectile. So I'll have three of these at any point, which is kind of impressive. But once you've got all three of them, uh, using the forward button and the heavy attack smacks the opponent in the face with the objection, objection logo. Objection. And if you do this, it transfers Phoenix into what they call turnabout mode, which is the mode from the game in which he's ready to turn around the case and win. This makes Phoenix the most powerful character in the game. Assuming that His, you haven't been killed by this point. Yeah, uh, they are merciful and give Phoenix a high degree of health. I think he has almost as much as Deadpool in order to survive the inevitable beating he's going to be taking while getting into this mode. He also has Maya to defend him while he's trying to get into this mode. What does Maya do? But we'll, Maya will project energy shields and has his basic uh, super, where she runs forward and beats uh, the opponent up. It's called the uh, Steel Samurai combo. Cool. Yeah. Once Phoenix is in turnabout, his basic heavy attack projects the giant objection finger of death, which will rocket the opponent across the map and do extremely heavy amounts of damage. The jumping form of this causes a ground bounce. The standing form of this causes a wall bounce, all of which open the opponent up to just repeated pummeling. 
Phoenix will only be in turnabout mode for so long. It has a depleting meter once oh, he activates nice. it. And once the meter is depleted, he drops down to investigation mode with no items. So it's kind of something you want to save to end the match as fast as you can. It also gives Phoenix access to the uh, ultimate move, which judges the opponent the way he ends trials in the game and causes almost a one-shot of any character in the match. I've yet to try it out in X-Factor form to see if it can one-shot anyone, but uh, suffice to say, it will do extreme damage to most characters. Now, does Investigation Mode Phoenix Wright have basic attacks that he can use for, you know, just chip damage if he got them mostly down? Oh yeah, he's got basic attacks he can do. He can do an air combo. They're just very short-ranged, and none of them hit particularly hard. It's when he's in courtroom mode and when he is in turnabout mode that he is at his most powerful. Alright, cool. Now Rocket Raccoon. Okay, um, Rocket Raccoon is probably one of the strangest Marvel characters in existence, and that to describe Marvel is kind of spectacular. But suffice to say, Rocket Raccoon is kind of like what would happen if you took a British Nick Fury and made him a raccoon. He's kind of psychotic in that he has the biggest firearms in the game, and that coming after Iron Man is kind of weird. He's incredibly fast, has pretty low health, but that's because he's also the smallest character in the game. Does he look like Samuel kind of... L. Jackson? No, he looks like a raccoon wearing a blue jumpsuit. If Samuel L. Jackson was a raccoon, would he look like Rocket Raccoon? Possibly? D except Rocket Raccoon is English, so... Yes. Um, yeah. he He's definitely one of the new ranged powerhouses in the game. He has an incredible amount of ranged moves and of traps that he'll, he will leave around the map. Uh, his most powerful move that I've seen used so far is called the Pendulum. It swings this giant log onto the map that, if it contacts with the opponent, will knock them full distance across the screen and cause a wall bounce. He is incredibly fast, and in the hands of a very skilled player, I have a feeling he's going to be just hideously powerful. Like, nerf bait powerful, you think? You know, oddly enough, I don't feel that any of the new characters would be nerf bait. I, I think that all of the new characters are spectacularly balanced. Impressive. I, I don't think that... Yeah, I don't think that one of them needs to be nerfed. In fact, the only flaw I've found with the game is that they buffed Doctor Doom to the point where he didn't need to be buffed to begin with. And in the hands of a skilled player, I've lost all three of my fighters to one Doctor Doom who just can endlessly repeat combos. And Doctor Doom was almost like that before, wasn't he? Yeah, and yet Marvel gave him three separate incredibly powerful buffs in this new version of the game. I should say Capcom instead of Marvel. I guess the moral of the story is don't play Doctor Doom in polite play. He's evil. Yeah, that's what it seems to be. All right, Frank so West. Po Frank West, huh? Okay, Frank West is one of those weirder characters that I played as him in Tatsunoko versus Capcom, and I wasn't really impressed. This time, he's gotten a full revision that makes him nothing short of terrifying. His gimmick is that, like in Dead Rising, he has a level up system that is achieved by tagging opponents with a camera picture at the end of any combo. As he does this, he will actually increase his level, and it will change the items that he uses for his various moves. So he'll start out with, like, a bat or something? Yeah, he starts out using a baseball bat. His throwing projectile is a pie. <laughs> Which is hilarious. He has a broom. Um, it was exactly as funny as it sounds. His most powerful weapon that he uses at level 1 is a fire axe that he uses in a, in a straight down chopping motion. As soon as we finish broadcasting, I'm going to be searching YouTube for a video of Frank, Frank West, West finishing pie. Galactus by throwing a pie at his face. Awesome. Um, but as you level up Frank, he switches what he's using until you hit level 4 and 5 where he actually pulls out the, like, the boat oar with two chainsaws duct taped to it and becomes one of the most damaging characters in the game. 
in order to get these levels, again, you have to tag the enemy with the camera picture at the end of a combo. Uh, in order to go from level 1 to 2, you need 5 uh, hits in your combo. Uh, 2 to 3 is 10 hits. And you can stack these over the course of multiple combos. You don't have to do it all at once. You can, though. And if you clear, like, if you got a 100 hit combo, you could go from level 1 to 5 instantly. Wow. But yeah, once Frank West hits level 5, he just gets psychotically good. Uh, one of his best moves, though, is actually not a damage move. It's his dive roll, which gives him full invulnerability and will leap behind the enemy. That's got to be nasty to fight against. Yeah, I, I've had a Frank West that was just leaping back and forth behind me, and I could not hit him for the life of me. It doesn't really accomplish anything. It just wastes a lot of time. Which, if you're just trying to clock somebody... Yeah, you can be clocked out by Frank West pretty easily. Okay. Well, now that we've covered the characters that don't make a dang lick of sense, I've lost interest. So I guess I'll, I'll put you on a <laughs> Doctor Strange, and then Pixie can take care of the rest of the list. Okay. List. Uh, Doctor list. Strange is one of the new tactical projectile characters. Uh, specifically, most of his moves leave a projectile in waiting around the map, which he can then trigger later. Uh, he also has just four other varieties of projectile and range spam. He's got Flight, which will make him powerful against a few characters. Uh, specifically, the new Iron Fist character has trouble against uh, Doctor Strange, seeing as he's entirely ranged and off the ground. He takes kind of the role that Phoenix used to by just zoning the opponent into oblivion. He seems to be the new king of that. Uh, yeah, overall, I have no qualms with Doctor Strange. I think he's a cool addition. I have no inclination whatsoever to play him. He's got some good combos. He's got some good chains. I think he'll be an excellent support character for uh, for tournament level play. But that's pretty much all I've got for him. He is one of the few characters that I would consider a basic fighter without many gimmicks. It, for as few of those as there are in this game. And he is somebody who should reasonably have enough power to be fighting the people he's fighting. Yeah, he's one of the ones that actually belongs here. Unlike Frank West. He's covered wars, you know. I don't often fight Shumagorath, but when I do, I use a camera. Level up. Alright, so who's next? Uh, I'm just going to go with them in the order that I wrote them down. Uh, so we'll start with the Nemesis T type. Okay, so Nemesis type T. Um, yeah. A as if the Hulk was not a big enough heavy hitter in this game, now we have Nemesis who is a cross between Sentinel and the Hulk in that he actually has ridiculously good projectiles, is incredibly tall, has great range, has great reach because of his tentacles, and hits like a truck. He's going to be incredibly scary if someone actually learns how to play him well. Has anybody learned yeah. how to play him well on ladder yet? Uh, no one that I've seen. I have not faced a good nemesis yet, and I have a feeling the problem is that everyone I've seen playing nemesis has just been using him as a call-in, right. as a support character, and no one's really made him just because of how slow he is. But because this but is a relatively part new of game, the point. there's plenty of time for the metagame to evolve and have nemesis take a place in the powerful characters. Yeah. Yeah, I have a feeling he'll have a place there. He, Nemesis doesn't have any special gimmicks. He's just a powerhouse. He beats people with a rocket launcher. Alright, so who's next? Alright, well, uh, ne next I have... Let me scratch Nemesis off. Uh, Firebrand. Okay, Firebrand. Kind of one of the weird additions that I wasn't expecting to be added to the game. Firebrand, for those of you who don't know, is the, like, champion version of the gargoyles from Ghouls and Ghosts. I did not know this, but as soon as I clicked on this link in the Wikipedia article, and I got brought to the page for Ghosts and Goblins, I was like, what? For the NES. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Because, I mean, we had, uh, we had Arthur in there, so somebody else was bound to show up. 
Yep, so now we have... Well, Arthur was mostly treated like a joke character. It it still is. However, Firebrand is not a joke character. He is actually the most mobile character in the game, and the best air character in the game. Um, He does not hit particularly hard, but what he has are great combos that include multiple wall bounces, multiple ground bounces, and just wrecking you. He also has easy off the grounds, which makes him great for continuing and chaining combos. And his ultimate is pretty much the best harassment tool in the game. He summons in another one of him that continues to just swoop to the ground and pummel the enemy. And the the summon in version also benefits from Firebrand's support special if he has used it at the time when he summons it. So it will have increased speed and increased damage if Firebrand does as well. So by using Firebrand, you basically just get an extra character in your roster? As long as you're summoning it as your ultimate, your level 3 super. And how long does that last? It is roughly a 15 second summon in. Okay, so so pretty short, but it does a lot of damage. It's Yeah, it's pretty short, but it's great damage and great harassment. No one will be able to get out of it. It, 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 it's like Felicia's uh, special where she calls in a little version of herself, but it works, unlike Felicia's. Felicia's is just like, ah, The, that's the little cute. kitty jumps up and down and hammers you. Yeah, no, Firebrand says, I'm going to beat you into the floor with this swooping hawk of death that will prevent you from using any projectiles. We're here to destroy our hit. enemies, not make them happy with cute kittens. Right? Cute kittens versus gargoyles with fire. All right, so I guess we can continue. All right, moving on down the list. Um, Virgil. Virgil. Virgil the Yeah. Pope. No. Dang it. No. Not, seen, not even spelt the same. Virgil, Dante's brother. Because why not? We need another Devil May Cry character in this lineup. Between Devil May Cry and Resident Evil, I think those two games are basically. Yeah, both of those have both of those have four characters each, which that means they're now tied with these Street Fighter characters. I really think they should have just introduced the Greek poet or the Roman poet. That would have been cooler. Iro, this is where you could program your own game. Character Poet Wars. I mean, if a, if a lawyer can fight a planet-eating giant space monster, then why can't a poet? I suppose you're right. Because Capcom didn't create a poet. Yes, but he's free license. Anyone could use them. Shakespeare, I bet, has the best ultimate. It makes sense in a game about Capcom and Marvel characters, specifically. This is why we have to... Capcom wants to make a game about that. This is why we have to have them make Poet Wars, the game. Yeah, I'd buy that. I call writing Shakespeare super. Because everyone else did. Okay, the, All right, the so actual... Continue. Is, is Post well, just laying about being sad? Fight. Yes. He's a blue guy with a katana. Um, the best thing you can say about him is that he is not Dante. And Does he even play like the same as no, Dante? No, he plays completely different, and that's what's great about him. Uh, okay. Virgil hits harder than Dante, is much slower than Dante, but he gets beyond that in the fact that he has a teleport system. Uh, down to back and light teleports you so in front of the enemy. basically better than Dante is what you're telling me. He has less moves. Dante is more of a variety toolbox of a character, where Virgil will be really great at getting in and taking out projectile characters, but can't really take much uh, hit-wise himself. I see. Dante can take on anyone. He is good against any opponent. Virgil is just good against those projectile characters that he can prey upon. Because, ha, you want to stand on the other side of the screen and spam? That's cute. So would this be an effective counter to Doctor Doom? Doctor Doom, Doctor Strange, uh, Deadpool, if played a certain way. He's really good against Ryu, because if Ryu winds up to do his Betsu Hadouken... Although Sentinel might just out-health him. No. Uh, He hits hard enough, and Sentinel's lost enough health. Sentinel's down to being a medium health character that uh, Virgil just tears him apart. Because all of Sentinel's moves are so slow that in the time it takes Sentinel to do them, Virgil can just teleport. He also has uh, probably the hardest-hitting normal super in the game, 
his uh, his just basic down to forward super creates a wave of katana slices that hit the entire screen and do insane damage. The only weakness to it is that any projectile will contact with him because the game registers that Virgil is in every place at once while the move is going off. So basically, you hit anywhere on the screen and you hit him. Yes. It's pretty hardcore. If you if you throw a projectile, you will hit Virgil while he's so doing Virgil that. So Virgil is move. actually omnipresent for a brief period of time. Yep. There, There's a series of webcomics about a, a superhero Fire. called Omnipresent Man. And, and he's omnipresent Fire. at all times. I'll, I'll link these in the chat in just a second. But it, it turns out that being perpetually omnipresent isn't all that great. Because your bad guy, the bad guys can always yeah, hear what I, you're planning. I think I've seen one of those issues. I, I'm going to go ahead and steal the list back and ask about Ghost Rider. Does he catch on fire? Does he ride ghosts? All right, so, so we're going to Ghost Rider, huh? Can you hear us? Yes, yes, I can. Okay. Uh, Ghost Rider is actually a really great uh, range character, surprisingly enough. Uh, the chain just provides him with incredible reach that gets him across the battlefield. He also has really good off the ground and really good assist. He is a non-gimmick character. He has no gimmick behind him whatsoever. Uh, his level 3 is, of course, the uh, Penance Stare, which does great amounts of damage as well as looking really cool. His off the ground, he gets on his motorcycle and runs you over. And he's got a really great chain super that goes into it. Um, he's a great assist character, really. All three of his assists actually do find a purpose in a in a competitive team. Uh, as well as hitting decently hard and having a good amount of health. Yeah. So who's next? Um, Hawkeye. Hawkeye is the new... Uh, actually, he's the only status effect character in the game. All of his basic shots give the opponent some kind of extra status effect. Uh, whether it's a, it's a lightning shot, it's a poison shot. No, as in status, on it puts it on the enemy. Huh. A Matarasu could slow you, so could Beautiful Joe. But most of Hawkeye's moves actually have an extra effect. Hmm. He has a, a spectacular amount of varied shots that he can do. So he's definitely a tricky character to play. You have to So know. it's basically like status effects in Pokemon? Yeah, well you have to know what you want to do with him. He can't blind you or anything, and he certainly doesn't turn you to stone, but he does electrocute you, and he poisons you, and his ultimate, Ant-Man, steps on you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Overall, I think he's a really cool, tricky character. I'm interested in seeing what the competitive players can actually do with him. Iron Fist. Iron Fist is probably the weakest of the new characters. And that's really weird for someone who's like the professional fighter of the Marvel Universe. Um, simply put, he is terrible off the ground. All of his moves are ground-based. And once he is in the air, all he can do is send the opponent back to the ground and then wait for them to get up. Does Iron Fist have an Iron Fist? Or are his fists made no. out of meat? His fists are made of meat, but they hit as if they were made of iron. I, I feel misled. Um, I mean, if the character's called Iron Fist, I want some Iron Fists here. He goes in the category of the Rekka character, which it's a fighting game term for those characters that use multiple uh, special move uh, chains. So, for instance, you'll be doing sets of three down-to-forward moves chained with various attack buttons. He actually has a lot of moves that you need to already be in a combo to be able to pull off. So, th this would be something that is good for experienced players. Yes. Specifically, the big thing about him is that he can uh, add different characteristics to his attacks. So, in the middle of a combo, you can use the light form of this to change his chi to green, which means he will generate more assist meter, your, your super meter. He'll charge that up more with each attack. Uh, you can also use the medium version of it to give him more speed. It's the blue chi. Or you can use the red chi, which is his heavy version, for more damage on your attacks. Do different characters take different amount of times to charge their supers? Uh, yes. Different characters contribute in different ways to the meter. Uh, some characters can build it very quickly through multiple combos. Some characters end up using more than they build. 
I'd also like to point out Iron Fist's wardrobe for just a minute. Okay. Just just point it out there. It's a thing you should look into. I, the open shirt Iron Fist? That, that is that is more plunging neckline than his neck has room for. I, I, also I think like that's more plunging neckline than Morgan. I, I, I would have predicted it's, it's, this character to be Flash if you hadn't told me, really. <laughs> like, I was, I was looking at... Uh, a, a match between Iron Fist and Morrigan, and basically the same, if not more, on uh, Iron Fist's end of that plunging into, um, yep, into the waistline there. All right, it's it's very different. Nova. So moving on. Nova, Nova is actually one of my favorites of the new characters. Um, he does have a unique gimmick, but it's one that you can completely choose to ignore in his fighting style, and actually I think most players are going to. So, one of the things Nova does is your red health, in other words, the damage that you have that will regenerate if you are tagged out. Nova can burn that to actually increase the power of his, some of his moves. So, this is, this is black mana in Magic the Gathering. Sacrifice and health to do damage. Pretty much. It also get if he burns enough of it, it gives him the most powerful level one super in the game. His uh, gavimetric pulse, which is a basic down to forward super. Uh, it fires a beam across the screen. The beam gets larger depending on how much of his health is missing in red. If forty percent of his health gets consumed by this ability, it's the most powerful level one in the game. So I guess it's now important to ask how much base health does he have? He actually has more than your average character. He is a tough. Um, he has decent speed. He has a lot of lunging attacks. Uh, he's called the Human Rocket, so he does spend a lot of time flying rapidly across the screen. Um, he has great ranged game. He has really good melee game, and he hits respectively hard. Not as much as, say, like a Nemesis or Hulk, but he's hitting at least as hard as an Akuma. Huh. Okay. Well, then there's one last character, Strider Hiru. Here are you. Yeah, yeah. so many people were happy to see him re-announced and argued that he should have been in the previous version of the game. Strider is Strider. There's no other way to put it. If you're familiar with Marvel 1 or 2, this is that character completely intact brought into Marvel vs. Capcom 3. He has all of his old signature moves. He works very well in the new system. He is exactly what you would want Strider to be. He's a perfect addition. So he, he's another character that dates all the way back to the Nintendo Entertainment System. Yep. And he... Old character is old. He was one of those characters that should have been in the original version, really. There was no reason not to include Strider other than we've got so many new people we want to put in that we can't make him work right now. So how does he fight? I have noticed... He fights like Strider. He's a ninja. He is a glass cannon, and provided you're not getting hit, he will just combo and tear apart the enemy with a lot of uh, various teleportation play. Uh, he's got a wall grab, which is actually his best move now because it triggers three unique attacks. He's hard to hit. He's hard to deal with. And unless you can trap him with projectiles or get him in a really good melee combo, he's going to be able to do enough damage to end most characters. He's also the only character in the game with two level 3 supers. He has his, uh, I think it's called the Ouroboros, where he summons two little probes around him that every time he does a normal attack will fire two discs of energy as projectiles that will hit the enemy, which can stack up damage really fast. He also has his old Ragnarok ability, which has been increased in power. Uh, he dashes forward, grabs the enemy, throws them in the air, and then creates three copies of himself, which proceed to uh, Ginsu the enemy. And do you choose which super you use? Yes, you get your choice of which one you do. They're both two different commands. It's just weird that he's the only one in the game who has two of these, when there are still some characters that don't even have one level three. It's very odd. Occupy Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. 1% of the characters have, well, like 5% of the level three supers. So, Pix, I think you can notice something about this list of new characters, so that I don't have to say it. They're all dudes. Yeah, there's not a female new character to this. 
But I suppose... Why, why, why was it going to be bad if you were to point it out? It wasn't going to be bad. I was just wondering if you would notice it. You, really? Is the feminist going to notice that, like... What is this? What percentage of the character list? There was there were thirty six, and now we added twelve. That's like half of the new. Actually, there were thirty eight when you add in the DLC characters. So now there are a total of fifty characters in this game. And what about more than half of them are male? Well, let's count. So one. Hang on, two, I'm, I'm going to make four, a five, male to female tally. Six, seven, eight. Seeing as this the... is terrible radio, let's do let's let Pixie do the math while I ask you about the online matchmaking. Okay, we can do that. There actually is on there actually is online matchmaking in the new version. Hey, that's that's a good feature. That right? seems like the, the feature that is the most important feature. It it's also the feature that didn't work in the previous version of the game. You'd have constant disconnects and poor connections and it it was Does garbage. Does Amaterasu count? Amaterasu is a female, but yeah. is also an animal, so I wouldn't count her. Yeah. Okay. One of them non humans. Oh, yes, Racist. Right. Speciesist. Race and species are like largely synonyms depending on what context you're using. I wonder... It, it Racist could be technically correct, although it's not the meaning the word normally has. But yeah, online matchmaking. Is it quick and easy to get in a match? Yes, it's very easy. And in fact, just like the other recent Marvel games, it is entirely possible to just turn on your invite uh, mode, and then just play normal arcade until you receive invites to play against other people. And does that pull you out of arcade, or do you choose to leave, or does it go when you it'll, end your it'll match? Pull you up, it'll pull you out of arcade when you are ready, or when an opponent is ready. Okay, that's, that's probably there's, what I want. There's only four on the Marvel side? Am I counting that right? One more time? There's only four ladies on the Marvel side? That is correct. And do you have the Capcom finished? Yeah, she counted the Capcom earlier. So, so what's yeah, the ratio? I'm double checking because this seems like really odd. I think she's getting the numbers now. Suffice to say, there are more on the Capcom side, which is kind of surprising because Marvel is a an older medium, and video games, which is Capcom's domain, are traditionally very sexist. Apparently not Capcom. No, yeah, I have that right. There are 12 female characters in this whole game if we're not including the dog. Out of 30. Which is really weird because Marvel has a ton of female characters. Out of 50 altogether, right? Yeah, out of 50 characters you have 12, so 24%. Are, are there any DLC with female characters? Yeah, Jill. Okay, I counted Jill. Are there any others? No, there are no other DLC characters right okay. now. Those are the two DLC characters. So, we still don't know if this is the final roster, because they could still add more DLC characters. Yeah. And so, the, as it is, 12 out of 50 are female. Yeah, just... How many of them are clothed? Like, none. Are we counting bodysuits? Are we counting fur? I don't know, fur? do skin-tight bodysuits? <laughs> skin-tight bodysuits. Ah, uh, Felicia. <laughs> I think that just leaves, uh... chun Lee is fully clothed. Yeah. Uh, X-23, you'd say yeah, no because she's wearing a bra. Yeah, that's a bra, not a shirt. Um, Jean Grey's skin Hasenko's tight bodysuit. Hasenko is fully clothed. Also a ghost. Um, Tron, Tron's fully clothed. She's also like 11. <laughs> um, yet that doesn't stop Iron Man from hitting on her before a match starts. That is so unbelievably creepy, by the way. He still uses his soap, what are you doing after this, and uh, should have just had a nice candlelight dinner after he wins. Pro tip, when you're saying, hey baby, you shouldn't be talking to an actual baby. That's bad. <laughs> right. Um, I forget, is Crimson Viper clothed? Uh, she's got that very deep, the weird suit thing. Yeah, up that's right. neckline thing, yeah. Yeah, likewise Trish has complete midriff. And, and also back, is wearing a, a corset, yeah. yeah. No, a halter would imply that there's some strap involved. Oh. It was held merely by her gravity-defying breasts. Gotcha. Also, which have weird storage capacity. <laughs> storage capacity? <laughs> or as I like to call it, the con wallet, yes. Excellent. Good for stealing money. 
So yeah, just under a quarter of the game's cast is female. That's incredibly depressing, actually. Right? Because Marvel has a huge roster. Like, I would have loved to see Power Girl in this. She could have easily taken the place of Nova. They'd have pretty much the same moves. Mm. Chest window. I mean, there, I mean there, there's a spectacular amount of female X-Men characters that could have been thrown in. It's true. I mean, I, I still am really depressed that we have no Fantastic Four characters. Like, Fox is just has a death grip on the rights to it. Which would make more sense if Fox hadn't completely ruined the franchise by making really shitty movies. Yeah, I watched well, the... explicit tag on this episode! I watched the riff tracks for, uh, for Rise of the Silver Surfer today and just laughed so hard that that was actually a serious movie. This is the movie where Galactus is weather. Rather than being yep. a, a giant who lives in space, he is a weather phenomenon. Or, a or the cool version, a swarm of skyscraper-sized robots. He, he was neither of those things in Rise of the Silver Surfer. He was like nope, a space fog weather. machine. Mm -hmm. Okay, so does the online multiplayer have integrated voice chat, and do you use it? It has voice chat, which gets turned off. Actually, no, it doesn't get turned off during the match anymore. Uh, it does have voice chat. It is active during the match. Um, I don't use it. I play the PlayStation 3 version, and I don't own a microphone because I don't want to chat with the people I play against, typically. Fair enough. It actually took us an hour to earn our explicit tag this week. Hey, go us. And what's the challenge versus challenge talent level of people online? Is it easy or is it hard? Um, well, right now the game is really balancing itself as far as players go. Uh, the game just came out, which means that those players who belong in the top tiers are still climbing their way there. So right now would not be a good time to just jump in online unless you have some competence in the game, because chances are you will run against these players who are just trying to get to the top, and they will beat your face in and then move on. Cool. One, one of the really great additions, though, that they've added is that if you create a custom game lobby where multiple keep, people can be in the lobby waiting to play, they actually did add a spectator mode, which was needed in the previous version of the game but was not present. So you will actually get to see other people fighting instead of just watching cards with their names on it clash against each other, annoyingly. Cards. Is that actually a thing that it did before? Yes, you watched the two players' cards where it said their name and rank, and they would bump into each other as if the cards were having a fight. Or doing shame. something else. Yes. And so now there actually is a spectator in a mode where you, can actually, where you can watch people actually play the game now. That was the worst feature of Marvel vs. Capcom 3, and part of why everyone is just referring... to Yeah, everyone was referring to that game as the beta test now. Like, Marvel vs. Capcom 3 was just a beta test, and this is the actual game that came out. The a beta few test later. that you paid to be in? Yes. It was a $60 paid beta test that let you play the game for nine months and three days. And now the real game is out, and you can play it, and it's sweet. So, I guess that brings us to our last category of is it fun? And for any fighting game fan, yeah, this this is the real version of the game. This is it. And the fact that they sold it for $40 instead of the uh, $60 that the previous version was, it's actually really worth it. Think about it this way. When Jill and Shuma Gorath came out, they were six, they were $5 <laughs> each on the PlayStation Network. I forget that what that translates to in Microsoft BS points. But they were $5 each. If you take all 12 of the new characters at $5 each, you're already buying a full $60 retail version of the game. That combined with the numerous tweaks that they made to existing characters, style upgrades, better online mode, um, just being able to play with a balanced Wesker and Wolverine is alone worth it. It's, it's $60. No, I'm looking at the... Oh, the Microsoft percent. point conversion? No. No, but I could pull that up. The percent of female to male? Yeah. It's 24. No, out, out of the whole game... Yes, 50. 50 characters. 50 times 2 is 100%, and so 24. Not so English teacher now, are you? I had to 
teach a lesson on this actually a few weeks ago, so. So he's had a refresher. <laughs> yeah, converting fractions. We we did that Convert, recently. What is it? Dollars to MS points. Wow, there's actually a thing for that. I told online? you there was a website for that. I'm sorry, that's just funny to I me. I told you this like months ago. I. Oh, wait, I can convert MS points to currency, but I don't think I can do it the other way around. Wait, hang on. US dollars. How much was it? Uh, five dollars. Convert. Four hundred points. Okay. So, yeah. Just in the amount of additional characters in this game, you already have By your default, money's this worth. This set to English pounds, but this site is pretty cool and I will link it in chat. So, yeah. If you're at all interested in fighting games and if you liked Marvel vs. Capcom 3... I think Pyro just fell over. No, I'm fine. Okay. You're making weird noises over there, Pyro. Yeah, right. Um, so yeah, if if you are into fighting games, uh, if you liked Marvel vs. Capcom three, don't complain that oh it came out nine months ago and now there's already a new version. If you bought the amount of new stuff in this game, you're already well over the forty dollars that it costs. Also, uh, I, I mean, people had this kind of. Uh this kind of like a cry fest over uh, Left 4 Dead 2 when it was, uh, it came out only like a year ago or something like that. You're getting all new stuff. That but The it, problem is you pack in so many features and it doesn't, it becomes too much for an X-Pack or you'd be spending like a week trying to download it. Yeah, it's, no. This is more than just an expansion. This is the next full version of the game, and the fact that they're selling it to you for less is totally worth it. Back in the day when a new when Mortal Kombat became Mortal Kombat 2, you know how many characters they added? Like, four. And how many of them were palette swaps? Most of them. Pretty much all of them. Most of four. <laughs> yeah. I mean, at least with this, we're specifically getting new characters with new None systems. None of these are palette swaps. And those people are complaining that Wham, them. my favorite character, isn't in this. Mega Man lovers. Boo -boo. Oh, snap! We're calling him out! <laughs> he doesn't even know. Actually, no. Capcom went one step beyond this to insult them and made Mega Man X an alternate skin for Zero. That's well, gonna well, be coming well, out. Well, 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 well. It's like, fine, you want your Mega Man? Guess what? He's the new version of the same character you already got. Because that character's cooler. Maybe if your favorite character isn't in this game, you should change your favorite character to Phoenix Wright or Rocket Raccoon. Sweet. So yeah, that's Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Totally worth the money. Um, Slow clap. I'm going to be enjoying it for a while. I, I'm very happy with all of the changes that got made to characters, even the ones that I play. Akuma had too much health. He needed to be nerfed into a glass cannon. Um, Iron Man was way too slow. I'm glad his speed got increased. Any nerf that hits Wesker is okay in my book. You just hate Wesker so much. Wesker and Sentinel, man. Those, those are the ones that are just like, yeah, the, these can get nerfed into oblivion and I won't care. They just, they just Although can't I do damage anymore and they only have one point of HP and they can't move. Yeah. You're like, yes! Yep, then I'm okay with them. Uh, I do think nerfing Phoenix was unnecessary. <laughs> I think Phoenix, lo Phoenix, right? lo yeah, lowering her damage when she went Dark Phoenix in X Factor would have been a great idea. Lowering her health further so that Hulk can kill her in two hits is a little ridiculous. Phoenix lands on the screen, Hulk does a super, and Phoenix leaves the screen. Take it out, Phoenix, like a boss. Yeah. She cannot take an actual hit anymore. I think Akuma can one-shot her now, too. With the Metsudo, okay? Yeah, he just does one super and Phoenix is dead. Okay, then. Even if she blocks, it's like a quarter of her health gone. We could test this. We could. In fact, I think we shall. But we're going to see... In the meanwhile, it's time for me to yeah, review we're gonna... Immortals. We're going to let you review Immortals, and I'm going to test this we're on We're going to do science to it! So, yeah, give me a minute. Okay. Go ahead, Pyro. Immortals. Immortals. The, the thing I can tell you about Immortals is go watch 300 instead. 300 was a <laughs> really good movie, and it's no surprise that 300 was a really good movie. It had muscular shirtless dudes I'm running around and stabbing each other. <laughs> Tons of homoeroticism, <laughs> gratuitous female nudity. When you have uh, all those things in the same movie, you pretty much are guaranteed to have a good movie. Well... 
you, you would be guaranteed to have a movie that was good if it wasn't Immortals. Immortals has all those things, except for homoeroticism. But I don't think even a large dose of homoeroticism would have been good enough to save this movie. What about a medium dose? Can we do a medium well, dose? Well, a medium dose would be even inferior. That'd be... That's like making you less sick by giving you less medicine. It doesn't make any so sense. So we need an overdose. Yes. A, a, a sufficient dose of homoeroticism that it replaces the entire plot. Because the fundamental flaw of Immortals is that it doesn't make a goddamn lick of sense. It's, it doesn't make any sense. It's but isn't that the problem of most of the Greek legends? That if you really analyze them, none of them make sense? No, actually, Greek mythology kind of has plenty of internal consistency. It is freaky and weird, but it makes sense no. with respect to itself. The This movie does not do that. This movie is just gibberish. The... I'll go, I'll go ahead and give you the plot outline, and the plot outline sounds pretty sensible, as long as I don't delve into the details. The details are the problem. Okay, so the outline is this. We're in ancient Greece, the gods are in power, and the titans are in prison, and only gods can kill titans, and only titans can kill gods. And then there's this bad guy who wants to free the titans because he thinks that the titans will let him rule over the mortals if he does that. And so... He, he's searching for a MacGuffin called the Epirus Bow, and he's, he's going to use it to free the Titans. But obviously that's not supposed to happen, so Zeus has been shepherding a lone warrior who will grow up to be a legendary hero. And he, he's our main character, and he's supposed to prevent the Madman from freeing the Titans. That all makes sense. That sounds like a recipe for a good movie. But then, the thing that happens is that the hero does not accomplish anything, and fails in every single task. And yet, at the end, he's still lauded as a hero. So, I I'm gonna go over this more specifically. So, it's the director wants you to like this guy. Yes, the director wants you to like this guy, and he has no redeeming qualities at all. So, the, the movie starts, he's in his hometown, and there's a pillaging army that's you know, ransacking the hometown for resources and executing the peasants. And the main character is like, oh, I'm, I'm going to protect my mother from these soldiers who are executing everybody. So he gets in a big fight and fights a bunch of soldiers, kills like ten of them, but then he, he gets tied down and has to watch his mother be executed because he didn't fight well enough. So then he failed at that, and then he gets sent to prison, and in prison... Or he gets sent to the salt mines because he's a big, hardy dude. And apparently they need big, hardy dudes to mine salt. And in, in the salt mines, he is, meets up with the Oracle of Delphi, who was also a slave. And they kept her in the salt mines, too, for some reason. But she breaks him she out. She doesn't seem like a big, hardy dude. No, she's not. She's, she's a, a little lady. And we get to see her naked plenty in this movie. Well... Maybe just one time, but I saw it in 3D, and the scene where you see her naked is she's standing uh -huh. in the middle of the screen, fully clothed, and then she drops her robe off, and it's like 3D, 3D buttocks. <laughs> so I, I, that... <laughs> you know, I just had a thought. I'm really glad Splice wasn't in 3D. Could have been horrifying. You really need to stop bringing that movie out. I'm sorry, that movie's just gonna be the end. Also, how story. bad did you have to cheat at this in order to make that stupid one-hit kill thing work? Okay, so while Pyro's been reviewing, we've actually been testing who can one-shot Phoenix. And it looks like any character using a super can kill Phoenix if they have a level 3 X-Factor up. Some characters don't need it. For instance, we can use... That was this. Nemesis, who can almost one-shot Phoenix. It looks like everyone can get her down to... Uh, a sliver of health, basically. Yeah, everyone can get her down to, like, less than 10% with minimal effort. Alright, so yeah, we've keep, done science to it. Okay, so, so we're in the salt mines, and the Oracle sees this guy, and he's like, clearly he is the chosen of the gods. And she knows this because she's the Oracle. So if she breaks him out, and 
single-handedly kills all of the guards and breaks out of prison, and then tells him where to go so that he'll find the Epirus bow, and then, so so he goes there, and he finds the Epirus bow, and the Epirus bow is actually like super cool. It, it looks like a regular bow, except when you draw the string back, there's like a magical arrow that appears in the notch without you having to load one. And, and the, the effect is really cool, and I'm like, man, this should have been in tons of movies. And, and he uses that to kill three bad guys who are just regular mooks who were threatening his pals outside while he was in the dungeon retrieving the Epirus bow. Can I ask a question? Okay. Does the Everest bow work, and you might not remember this, like that magical spear that Kin had in that really old chapter of Goblins during the escape from Silvermoon City? I probably didn't even read that chapter of Goblins. I hopped on late. Okay. How, how was it that? Just throw that up. Uh, it's, it's like she kind of made like she was tossing it, and then like a whole bunch of them would show up. No, but it, it is nearly as good because all you have to do is keep plucking the string and arrows will keep appearing. And they're like super long distance and heat seeking and they never miss and they one hit kill anybody. So it, it is a super powerful device. And You know, I'm thinking I want this weapon the next time we have to play test a Call of Duty game. Yeah, it, it could compete because guns run out of ammo and this bow does not. So, so he kills like, three little mooks with this, and then immediately manages to lose it. Like, all he needed to do was hang on to it, because without the bow, the prison that the Titans are in is unbreakable. So, the world is pretty much fine, as long as he just keeps this in his back pocket. And this should be easy, because... And then he could, like... He's incredibly powerful. Solve world hunger. Yes, yes, he could. But... Okay, so they're, they're wandering around after they've retrieved the bow. They go to the Temple of Delphi, because, you know, that's a place to be. And they see that the bad guys had been torturing the former priests in the Temple of Delphi. And they're like, oh no, this is bad. And there's some bad guys who are down there in a pit. So they're on a ledge, and there's bad guys in a pit. And instead of pulling out the bow and shooting the bad guys, what he does is he climbs down the stairs and he goes into the pit and gets right up close to the bad guys. At which point they steal the bow from him and run away! So, wow, you're a really stupid hero, hero. This is Theseus we're yes, uh, talking about, this is about, Theseus. Right? The legend? Yeah. It, it, it is, the character is the named actual Theseus, but it has Theseus. nothing to do with the legend of Theseus. Pretty much nothing I was going to say, all. this sounds... This so sounds wait, nothing like the yeah, Theseus I remember. We're not actually doing the actual Theseus mythology. We're just completely BSing this for the sake of a film. Correct. And th this yep. movie has all oh. of the traditions of Greek mythology with none Said of the Said you are the shortest way in class today. So. You get a gold sticker. Can, can we have a slow clap for just how bad this film must be? I don't know, but I'm wearing gloves. This is to to completely ignore that mythology happened? So, let me explain one of the and major... And figure we can use these characters and make up our own fan fiction? <laughs> let me explain one of the major sources of conflict in this movie. Zeus insists that the Greek gods have a non-intervention policy in mortal affairs. Zeus... L O freaking L. <laughs> so every god other than Zeus is like, well, let's go down there and punch some bad guys in the face and prevent the Titans from being freed so we don't die, because that's a reasonable thing to do. And then Zeus is like, no, the Greek gods don't interfere in mortal affairs, except for all the mortals he except slept for with. One hundred percent of the time, that is the only thing Greek gods do. They're interfering with mortal affairs in every way, constantly. There is. There is specifically one myth, and I can't remember the name of the story, where it just basically goes along the lines of... Because uh, I took a mythology class in high school. Giant nerd. Um, wh wherein I'm reading this, and it's honestly, it's like two tiny pages long. Wh wherein it's basically... Yeah, there, were, there was this, this couple, this man and wife, 
and they, they did everything right, and they were good people or whatever, and then all of a sudden, the gods decided to turn them into lions because sometimes they decide to mess with you, and that's, that's, that's it. Because, hey, yeah. why not? So that, that is Your life was too good. The moral of the story is that the gods just t like to screw with you sometimes, and there's nothing you can do about it. So that, that is how the Greek gods work in actual mythology, but then this movie completely disregards it. One other thing that the movie completely disregards is that the Greeks apparently lived in Pueblos. The, the architecture in this movie doesn't make any sense. They're seriously living in Native American Pueblos. It, what? This, that's Can not this how get Greece any works. Worse? Worked. It, it, yes, yes. Well, so anyway, they're, in, they're at the Temple of Delphi and they're in a pit and they just lost the bow. And so Ares is like, uh, forget what Zeus says. I'm just gonna go in and punch some bad guys. So Ares shows up and he starts punching some bad guys. And this this is one of the first really visually stunning scenes in the film because Ares is like super fast and super powerful and he's just exploding people's heads. He's like boom, 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 punching and killing and shirtless. And it, it's pretty hardcore. And then Zeus shows up. I love that we mentioned punching and then killing as if this is like a hierarchy like escalating and then we get to shirtless which seems like it would be at the bottom of that list. No, no. Shirtlessness is the most important characteristic of these movies. 300 if, if everybody was wearing shirts all the time would not have been a good movie. I mean all, all of the stabbing and killing could remain but with shirts it wouldn't work. Very well do go on. Anyway, so after Ares does all this cool stuff, Zeus shows up and he's like, Hey man, I told you not to interfere. And then he just straight up punches Zeus, punches Ares in the face so hard that he just flies through a wall. And then we assume he's dead. So, yeah, and then he doesn't show up in Olympus anymore. So Zeus is like, nope, no interfering. And then he kills Ares. What? <laughs> okay. And so, while Ares was doing this, he did not manage to retrieve the bow, which all, all of the bad guys who stole the bow are dead now, except for, like, this little evil dog. And this little dog bites the bow and then runs away with it. And... Okay, so is the dog actually evil, or are we just inferring this? Um, the dog seems to be smarter than a dog should be, and he's on the side of the bad guys. We don't know anything specific about it, but... He steals the bow and okay. runs it back to the evil person. This movie sounds painfully bad. It is really, really bad. <laughs> so after after Ares is dead, Athena is like, well, you need to go retrieve the bow. So she summons two magical horses that will run all the way to the bad guy's encampment and then die. And so they ride those. And Zeus, for some reason, doesn't punish Athena for this. Zeus is like, whatever, that's fine. Because she's his kid. Yes, actually. So was Ares. There is like five minutes of this film of Zeus just staring at Athena like, man, I would love to have sex with you. Zeus is completely infatuated with Athena, and they do state that Athena is his daughter, and it is super weird. It... He's her only parent! What the hell? Yes. It, it is freaky and creepy. Although that part is actually, you know, maybe consistent with Greek mythology. I love that there's a, a four kid specification. I'm looking up the Greek mythology family tree, and then two suggestions down, Google is trying to suggest the Greek mythology family tree chart for kids. <laughs> I don't think there is a four kids version of this. Although I'm tempted to see what comes up at top. I think the four kids version is when you just Chaos. put all of these standard Olympus gods on a row with each other and don't this, mention any of them. This is the where all the problems start. Yep, Zeus is just the source of all of the reason that the Greek mythology family tree resembles more of a shrubbery. <laughs> I mean, there's some of it going on up top, but that this is where it like branches out and looks like a weeping willow. <laughs> yep, that's where it gets a little weird. Yeah. Anyway, I'm trying to find Ares on here. Yeah, he's over here. 
I think Ares yeah. is a titan. Zeus son. is not connected. Yeah. yeah so Zeus Ares is, is just a brother. All right then. Yeah. Anyways, the heroes ride to the bad guys' encampment, and they're camped out in front of a big old wall. So the the good guys, who is just the regular Greek government before the bad guys raised an army and started killing everybody. They're on the far side of the wall. The bad guys are on this side of the wall. And so, somehow, the good guys get on the far side of the wall. The heroes do. And this doesn't. This is not explained in any way. It just happens. And then there's a big old fight underneath the wall. And the hero gives a, a rousing speech that's like, fight the bad guys, but it's a really shitty, compelling speech. Like, I was like, man, I, I don't even want to fight the bad guys. And I'm just sitting in a theater. Like, let's, let's leave. <laughs> I'm ready to go home. And so they're fighting under the wall. And then the main bad guy is standing below the wall. And then just spontaneously, he's on top of it. For no reason. And this, like, happens over the course of about 30 seconds. It just happens. It doesn't make any sense. And so, from being on top of the wall, he... The wall is apparently leaned up against the mountain where the titans are imprisoned. So he uses the bow to blast open the walls and get to where the cage is. And then he blasts open the cage of the titans. And so Zeus shows up and he's like, Okay, I guess we can fight with the titans now. And he also looks at the main character and he's like, Wow, you, f you didn't accomplish anything. Because way, way to be a legendary hero when you've... You let the titans get out, you let your mom get killed, you let the bad guy get the bow. You, you've done nothing worthwhile this whole film. And so, then there's a cool CG scene where it's gods versus titans, and they're punching each other to death. And there's some good action in that scene. But then, all of the gods die, except for Zeus and Athena. And Athena is, like, mostly dead. She's wounded. And so Zeus is like, well, I guess now that we've been fighting for about ten minutes, I'm going to use this failsafe that's apparently been here all along, that I can pull on this chain and collapse the mountain burying the titans. Okay, A, why didn't you do this ten minutes ago? And, and B, okay. And so he does that, and then he, he, he leaves with Athena and lets all of the other gods die. So Hermes is dead, Poseidon is dead, there's a couple other they show, and they die for no particular reason. And then he turns Theseus into a god and is like, well, you're coming too. And so now at the end of the movie, there's Zeus, Athena, and Theseus are the only gods left, are the only immortals left. And immortals refers to either gods or titans in the movie. And so, Theseus never did anything to warrant being promoted to a god, but then somehow he gets a magical son, and Zeus shows up to his son and is like, well, you better start preparing to be a legendary hero suit too, because soon there's going to be a giant battle. And then it cuts over to the scene where it's like a billion gods fighting with a billion titans. And then the movie ends. It doesn't make any sense, because... There's only three gods left, and all the titans are dead. How is this gonna happen? It doesn't... And then the movie's just over. And it was really bad. Maybe by battle they meant massacre? <laughs> no, they, they show you in CG, and it's the scene from the trailer where they're fighting and they're not on ground, they're just sort of floating in the sky, and they're fighting each other. And there's clearly thousands and thousands of titans and thousands and thousands of gods. But it, where did they come from? They didn't come from anywhere. It just happens. Yeah, this hurts my brain. So, Try not to think about it too much. Summary of Immortals is don't see it. Go see 300, because 300 is really good. Well, you can't catch that in theaters anymore, but... Also, I believe it's free on Netflix, if you subscribe. Well, Netflix itself isn't free. Yeah, but if you've already got it, then why not? Mm. Find some way can, to watch that. Can I talk about an actually decent movie that I got to see this Go week? Go for it. Um, I finally got to see Limitless, which was awesome. Yeah. 
I think we were trying to watch that, what, a year or two ago? Uh, a year. Um, that That's actually a good movie, so instead of Immortals, go see Limitless. So this is the one where the guy takes the drugs to be really smart. Yes. Yes, and it, it handles the addictive nature of this drug, and it handles the quest for money and the quest for power and what that means and what Despite people will do to keep it. Despite the fact that it that stupid myth that we don't use the entirety of our brain. The, yeah, it keeps that one let going. Let me explain to the audience how this myth works. We don't use the entirety of our brain all at one time. We use it about 20% is thank active you. at a time, and different parts you, of your brain you. do different things. So if you're driving, you're using a different part of your brain than if you're reading, because they do different things. If you're doing arithmetic, that's something else. And so there is... Unless you're reading while driving. Which, is, which could be which happening, but then you're, you're probably going to die, so then you'll be using 0% <laughs> of your brain. There, there is a phenomenon wherein you use where 100% of your brain is active at one time, and that's called having a seizure. I, I'm encouraging Pix to read this description that we pulled up on Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Nova's the, profile? The profile description of the superhero Nova. Who does should that put, sound like? Should, should I put on my journalist voice? Yes, I want you to read this journal journalist style. Chosen by the dying alien Roman Day to receive his Nova Corps powers, Richard began his new life as a superhero. His battles take him all throughout the universe, fighting evil wherever he is needed. So, that's like direct confirmation that... This is Green Lantern? Yep. <laughs> this is Green Lantern, without any ring powers, who just punches things really hard. And has a worse coordinated outfit. Yeah, no, that outfit's terrible. This is Green Lantern without any licensing issues. Yep. So yeah, um, see Limitless. It's actually like... I, I constantly kept making Great Gatsby references to it. It's actually really good. So there you go. Good movie. I, I know why you're chuckling, Pyro. Stop it. Alright, so I think that's... Do, do you guys have anything else we need to throw at the audience now that we've been on for yes, over we can, hour? Yes, we can go into next week's review because I'm totally excited about it and it's going to be a lot of fun and I hope we get a lot of listeners for it. I, I want a lot of live people for this That's one. That's the wrong one. Yeah, nope. We will be reviewing Saints Row the Third. I was going to get the disc out and show everybody, but you don't have it out. A game which, in fact, opens with you leaping out of a plane, only to shoot your way into the cockpit of the same plane later, fly through the entirety of the plane to assassinate someone, and then go shooting out the back. That's how the game starts. Intense. Yeah. So this one's going to be fun. I hope a lot of people tune in for it. Again, as always, we will be on next Tuesday night at 6 p.m. Central Time. I, I suppose we ought to clarify that this means Tuesday the 29th. There you go. So Tuesday the 29th at 6 p.m. We'll be uh, here reviewing Saints Row the 3rd. On your couch. On my couch. Pretty couch that it is. So I'd like lots of listeners because, believe me, the commentary that we're going to have, it's going to be worth it. All right, well, so, I guess So, for Nerd Talk, it. I'm Sen. I'm and Pixie. And I'm Sim. And you have been listening to Nerd Talk. Bye-bye. next week.